Good morning, everybody. Today we've got a Gorilla GX150 that we're going to check the gas on. This is a side plated hammer. It's got a high pressure accumulator and a low pressure backhead. This is a Gorilla charge kit. Comes with a hose and bottle adapter. Basically, all the stuff I have here on the table uh, high pressure gauge, low pressure gauge, and an extension. This is the charge kit itself. It has three separate ports there's a bleed off valve a hose connection port, and a quick, connect, quick disconnect for the gauges. That works. Okay, first thing we're going to check is the back head. That's uh, located up on the top of the breaker here, right by where the hoses come in. And this right here is the back head charge valve. And we're going to take the plug out of the center of it. Now we put the extension in here so we can get away from the hoses and be able to work on this easily. These are real fine threads so you don't really have to crank on them too much even though there are wrench flats you don't need to put a wrench on it. Just make sure it's steady and uh, not really wobbling around a little bit. So now we pick our low pressure gauge which is 350 psi and we connect it to the quick connect port. We make sure, make sure our cap is tight on the hose connection, which it is. Close the bleed off valve and then push the plunger down. Okay, we're right around just under 60 PSI. This hammer requires 88 to run optimally. So what we do is we make sure this plunger lifts back up and we bleed the gas up. It should just hiss for a half a second. <clears throat> Then, so we need to add gas, so we come over here to the nitrogen bottle. This should be able to tighten right up. Tighten up the hose. Okay, take our hose port off. Drop it. on, snug it up. Now to charge it, we're going to basically do the reverse. We're going to make sure this bleed off valve is closed and you're going to just barely crack open the bottle. Uh, if you want to be safe, you can put the high pressure gauge on there so you don't accidentally go up over 350 and cook the gauge. So you crack this open. You do not need to put the plunger down because the gas pressure differential will automatically work to push the gas in. <clears throat> now what we want to do is charge up over the 88 required. It's going to take a little bit of time because it's a big cavity in there. It's a large volume of gas. Okay, so we're a little over 100 there. I'm going to go a little more. Again, be careful if you open the bottle real quick you can get all 2,000 PSI out of it. Okay, close the bottle off, make sure the plunger is up, and bleed off the gauge. Close that bleed off valve back off. Now we're gonna go back to the, we're gonna go back to checking the gas so we can bleed it down to what we want it to be. This way it verifies we actually got gas in there in the first place. Close that, again, everything is closed. The hose connection and the bleed off port are closed. So I'm gonna push the plunger down again. Okay, right, let's put the low pressure gauge on there. Get a more accurate reading. Okay. Okay, look at that. We're all the way up to 150 PSI. So now with the plunger down, I'm going to crack the bleed off valve open. And drain this gas down. Okay, push it, pop it up, we're at 88, bleed it off. Now I close everything off, I want to make sure the back head charge valve isn't leaking, otherwise we would start to see this, the needle on the gauge come up because everything is closed. 
and it's not, so I think we're good. We are leak free, okay? Now we're gonna move down and check the accumulator. It's higher pressure, slightly different operation. We do not need to use the plunger on the charge kit for the accumulator. We don't really need the extension either. What we will do, let's put the cap back on here to make sure we don't get any dirt in there. Okay, so uh, this is the charging port and this is the cap for the needle valve. First thing you wanna do is take the charging cap off, the needle valve cap, I'm sorry. That would be wrench tight, but I loosened it already. You wanna just make sure this needle valve is tight. Sometimes when you loosen the cap, it can loosen the valve. Same thing, now we take this plug out. Take the same charge kit. Thread it in all the way down to the O-ring. There's an O-ring on the bottom of the charge kit. That's what it seals on. You want to turn it so that it's this is tight. Same thing with the back head. If you get to that point and it's still moving like that, it's not tight enough. It'll leak from underneath it. So that's as tight as it needs to be. <clears throat> so we're going to put our high pressure gauge, 1400 psi. Connect that on. I believe that valve is still closed. That hose port cap is still closed, so we're going to uh, put the Allen wrench in the needle valve over here. Right in this needle valve. And we crack that open. Okay. 800 PSI. Uh, this hammer calls for 60 bar, which is about 870 PSI. So um, we'll add a little bit of gas to it. So we close that back off, bleed the gauge, so we can take the cap off and connect the bottle. Take the cap off. Connect the hose. Make sure the bleed off is closed. Now this we can do either way. I'm actually gonna open the needle valve first so now we're charging all the way back to the bottle here, and we've got just under 800 PSI, so I'll crack the bottle open. And again, we're gonna overcharge so we can drain back to where it's supposed to be. Okay, you don't have to open the needle valve very far, probably a half a turn is all you need. Close the bottle back off, we're up over 1,000. Close the needle valve, bleed it off. Then we're gonna do the same like we did in the back head. Take the hose off, put the cap back on, and essentially check and drain to where it's supposed to be. Bleed off valve closed, hose cap tight, needle valve open. Now we're way up at 1,000 PSI. See how it was at about 1,050, but just by draining the hose, we lost a little bit. That's why we wanna overcharge. So now we crack the bleed off valve a little bit. Right there, close the needle valve. And then you want, you want that to be pretty snug. Drain it off and now we always like to check for a leak before we take the gauge off. It could be leaking by the tip of that needle valve. So I close the bleed off screw. And that's still plugged. And the same thing with the back head, we wanna to check to see if that needle moves up at all. In this case, it's not. So that tells me that the seal on the tip of the needle valve is good. And that's basically it. We pull the charge kit off, put all your tools away, put your caps and plugs back on nice and tight so they don't rattle off. And congratulations, you just checked and recharged your hammer.